in the ministry. All right, well, let's go to God's Word. God's Word is coming to us out of Joshua on today. So when you find Joshua chapter 9, we're going to start around verse 14. If you stand on your feet with Pastor Joshua chapter 9, verse 14. The Israelites sampled their provisions, but somebody says something's getting ready to change, but did not inquire of the Lord. Look at somebody and say they didn't pray. Verse 15, then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live. And the leaders of the assembly ratified it by an oath. I want to talk today from this thought, the priority of prayer. The priority of prayer. You may be seated. Our world is in turmoil. And... It's so important, as I was watching the news and listening to all this going on in Israel, the Palestinians, all the conflict there that just came out of, uh, I won't say out of nowhere, it's been brewing for a while. It's time that believers start accelerating the utilization of the weapon we have called prayer. Our world is in trouble. And last Sunday, I introduced to you uh, a new definition for the sensational social media tool called a GIF. I told you that Google, or should I say artificial intelligence, defined a GIF or GIF as an acronym for, that stands for Graphics Interchange Format. And we said that these, these emojis, these, uh, these gifts, allow us to communicate without even saying a word or writing anything down. When you see these images, you know what it's saying. Uh, look at look at Kerry saying that he says, I "Can't help, I'm that good." You know, he's he's like, "What can I say? I'm just good." And he didn't say a word. He just did that, and everybody know what he means. Um, but I t- I told us we were going to change that acronym for our purposes. As we look at it this week, uh, the spiritual discipline, we said we were going to make it stand for God's intercession focus. G-I-F. Say it with me. God's focusing on intercession with God. And (laughs) this past week, Sister Karen Anderson, uh, one of our resident poets and songwriters, she's always writing Amen. Y'all know Sister Karen. She's good, isn't she? Yeah. She's. And she wrote me and said, Pastor, that sermon just inspired me so that I got another acronym I want you to deal with. I said, what's that? She said, FOG, F-O-G. Focus on God. I said, oh, we need more FOG in the house. Focus on God. And so today... As we focus on God and this GIF, this intercession medium, this weapon called prayer, we we stopped in the Old Testament and we pulled out an account in the book of Joshua. Joshua and the children of Israel are on their way to the promised land. But of course, like Joshua, any time you're headed to a better place, there's always going to be a devil in between you and where God is trying to take you. Amen. I don't care what, what, what's going on. You're trying, to, you're trying to date somebody. You're trying to build a life together. The devil is going to always get in the mix. You're trying to rear your children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And the devil will always get in your mix. You're trying to figure out if, you know, if, if I should change this job or go to that job. you got to remember that devil is everywhere all around you trying to keep you from the purpose and the destiny that God has for you. 
Just expect it when he shows up. Just expect it. Matter of fact, if the devil don't show up in that before you make that decision, that means that maybe you shouldn't go that way. Amen. He's always somewhere in the midst. The Bible said that the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites were all standing in the way of Joshua and the promised land traveling children. But even though all these folk were in Israel's way, the Bible said that in chapter 7 and 8 that, that the Israel is defeating their enemies left and right. It did not matter where they came from or how many armies or how large the army was. God gave them the victory. The favor of God was on their lives. Matter of fact, Joshua's victory campaign was so impressive that the folk all around the surrounding cities had gotten the word that Israel's God is fighting for them. Is there anybody here glad that God fights your battles? Yes, God will fight your battles. And every now and then when you're God's child and you've got God's favor in your life, you hear a little voice saying to you, don't worry. You don't have to fight this battle. This battle is not yours. This battle is mine. Come on, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Sometimes we need to know that this battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. Amen. In chapter 9, verse 1, but when all the kings heard about these things, what things? Well, they heard the Jericho River had dried up, and the children of Israel crossed over the second time over a body of water when it was no float or boat. They, they also heard that the walls of Jericho had fallen down. What a miracle. And, and, and the biggest and largest army, the Amorites, had been defeated by these folk called the Israelites. They Amen. had heard God was fighting for them. So what did the enemy do? Look at it with me. Verse 2. So they came together to make war. So they came together to make war. Here they are, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, Perizzites, all those folk, the Jebusites. They came together to do what? To make war. War. How many know that sometimes it's amazing to me that folk that don't even like each other will come together to fight you? <laughs> we see that in the, in, in the House of Representatives. I mean, it's bad when enemy get together and they want to come after you. Sin will make some strange bedfellows. If you don't believe me, just watch Fox News. Strange things are going on in our world today. That's why we must what? Pray. Priority of prayer is critical for our community. If we're going to navigate this season that we're in, this season of Rising racism, this season of white nationalism, this season where people say, I'll, I'll tear it down before I share it. Tear it down before I share it. We must make prayer a priority. Having trouble with your child? Tell so what you do. Get up, wake Set your alarm clock at 3 o'clock in the morning when they're asleep. Go in the room and get on your knees while they're asleep. Plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. Come on, somebody. It, it, you, may, you may think it's not working right now, but when you put a priority, a prayer on your child, on your grandchildren, on your wife, on your husband, God will fight your battles. Amen? But here again, Joshua and the Israelites are on a roll. They have defeated just about every army that has stood in their way. How many know it feels good when life is good? When everything's going right? It's like, man, I'm enjoying life. I can sit back, man. I'm just, when life is going good, man, I tell you, we, 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 we love that. 
Everything's clicking. Everything's working. But that's when we need to be on our guard. Because Joshua, things were going so well, they got to a place and a decision, and they did not pray. Now, in chapter 9, Joshua did do something that, that, that went against the grain of most military campaigns. The Bible said that in chapter 8, after he was winning all these battles against all the Hittites and the Jebusites and all those ites that were fighting against them, he was beating everybody. He pulled his army off of the battlefield, and they went, amen, to have a sabbatical. So in this journey called life, every now and then, no matter how smart you are or how good you are or how successful you are, you need to find some time and a moment somewhere where you pull off the road of life, connect or reconnect with God through prayer. Amen? You, you just have to do that. You have to find some time just to say, listen, I, I, I just need to disconnect for a moment so I can reconnect or connect with God. As you know, I, I've had the privilege to pray uh, at the Indianapolis 500. And Caleb, Caleb knows something about this. When the Indianapolis 500, you know, that, that, that no matter how fast the driver can, can drive, no matter how good his sponsor is, no matter what kind of car he or she drives, uh, each of them, I noticed, had a pit stop. Amen? Right, uh, yeah. They, they each had a pit stop. In this crazy world, you must make sure that you have a pit stop somewhere in your life, a place where you can get off of this race of life, pull over to the side, and let folk, amen, minister to you, or make sure you get your tires changed up, you get new oil, you get some gasoline, and you get refueled and reconnected so you can run this race for God. Everybody needs a pit stop. Amen? Yeah, the young folk used to say that when life got crazy, they would say you can lean with it and rock with it. But I'm old school. Sometimes you got to go old school. Like the style Lixies, you got to stop, look, listen to your God, hear what he's saying. Stop, look. Listen to your God. Hear what he's saying. Oh. Amen. Oh. Oh. Anybody ever had to stop? Look. Listen. Hear what God is saying. Amen. But in our text today, even though they stopped, that was a good thing. They, they, they stopped to rest. But they did not what? Pray. They forgot to pray. I wonder someone listening to me today, whether you're online or in person, that you wish you had prayed more before you made that decision. Anybody here want to tell the truth and shame the devil and said, I wish I had prayed more before I made that decision? Because you have to watch that old devil. Everything's going well for Joshua, and then the enemy changed his tactics. Watch this. All of the ites are fighting against Joshua. But there was a subgroup called the Gibbonites. That's what this text is about. The Gibbonites decided we can't beat them. So let's find a way to trick them. Look at their deception. Verse 3 says, However, when the people of the Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they resorted to a ruse. What's a ruse, Pastor? Well, let me tell you. Let me, I had to go and read some other, other verses. The Amplified Bible says they worked cunningly. The New King James Bible says they acted craftily. The New Living Translation says they resorted to deception. 
Sometimes that old devil won't fight you. What he would do is try to trick you. The text said that the Gibeonites realized that they could not whip Israel, so they decided to trick them. The devil knows he can't overpower you when God is with you. So what he would try to do is to outsmart you. Amen? The devil knows he can't defeat you. You're God's child. So what he'll try to do is deceive you, get you off track, slow you down, frustrate you. That's what he does. Satan is a master of deception. He showed up in the very beginning of things. Right there in Genesis chapter 3, he showed up in the beginning. Remember how he slipped up on Eve. He didn't say, hey, girl, eat this apple. Hey, girl, eat this orange. Because we don't know what the fruit was, but whatever. He, hey, girl, eat this. Ain't what he did, is he? No, that's not how he operates. He don't say, hey, girl, come home with me and take off your clothes. That ain't how he operates. Huh? No, no, no. He gets that Teddy Pendergrass voice that says, come on and go with me. Come on over to. Can you do it? Won't you do it? <laughs> you better watch that old devil. He will set you up every time. He knows that slick walking rascal knows how to set you up. The Gibeonites knew they could not defeat Joshua, so they said, hmm, let's find a way to deceive them. In verse 8, it says, they said this. Here's a couple things they said. This is what they said. They said, oh, we are your servants. They appealed to Joshua's pride. The devil will appeal to your pride. Mm -hmm. he, he would use success to swell your head. Look what you did. Look how they love you. Look how far you've come. Look what you built. He, he appealed to Joshua's and the Israelites' pride. We're your servants. Now, verse 9, we've come because of the fame of your God. Mm. They appeared religious. We've come because we've heard about your God. They appeared religious. See, be careful. He may come to church with you a couple of times, but see if he goes to church by himself. He appeared, she appeared religious until you got her or until she got you or he got, oh my God. But appeal to Joshua's pride Appeared religious, verse 10, we heard about y'all and how all y'all defeated the Amorites. So they applauded Israel's accomplishments. And we like applause. We love for people to applaud us. But be careful, everybody clapping for you ain't really with you. Amen. Then verse 12, he said, look at our bread. It was fresh when we started out, but look at our wineskins. Look, look at our clothes. They, are, they were new when we started out, but now they're worn. And they just came from, from the other side of the tracks, but they act like they came from a far country. They altered Israel's reality. And that's what the devil will always do. He will alter your reality. Sometimes the devil will make you think nobody loves you. But that ain't really true. He will alter your reality thinking that this person really loves you when it's not really true. He'll make you think that, 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 that I ought to get in business with this person because they got this or got that. But sometimes what they have really isn't what they really have. Satan is a master of altering reality. He makes some things look different than what they really are. And many times, what it looks like really ain't what it is. I mean, some of the stuff we're looking at is fake. 
And we, the only way you can get to the truth of what's really going on in that situation is to what? Pray. Ask God to show you. They made a bad decision. It said, scripture says the men of Israel sampled their provisions, but they did not require, inquire of the Lord. They forgot to pray. They operated in the natural and not the supernatural that only comes through prayer. Amen. They operated in the natural. And that is so, so, such a difficult task for us as believers is to try to make sure that we're operating and being led by the Spirit of God. It's so critical. And listen, and if you don't have that discernment, if you don't have that wisdom, make sure you got some people in your life close to you that can help you with that discernment. And that can help you make those right decisions. That's so important. There have been times that I've almost gotten myself in trouble, and, and, and Sister Hope will say, well, honey, do you not see what I see? There's something going on here. And I've, I've, I've alleviated some pain in my life because God gave her the discernment to read that young man or to read that young woman. That's why you got to slow down. I tell my girls, my daughters, I taught them. It takes time to know someone. I don't care if you did meet them online. Make sure they get in line over time. (laughs) Somebody ought to tweet or text that. (laughs) Jasmine, I met them online. But I better give it some before they cut so they can get in what? Line. Then I might have a glass of, oh, I'm sorry. Let's get <laughs> Look at looking all religious like you ain't never had a glass. <laughs> I'm going to use the line that my relatives will use on me. Jesus turned water into wine. (laughs) You can't go by what you see. See, that's why prayer is so important. We're not smart enough to see the, the devil been at this for thousands of years. And he's got a personnel, a personnel file on each and every one of us. He knows my weaknesses. He knows your weaknesses. And your weaknesses are not my weaknesses. So when he come after you, he goes to your personnel file. He said, hmm, I remember this happened. Let me try that again. That's why you have to bathe everything you do with what? With prayer. See, the Israelites, they settled for for, for a material sign. They said, look at our bread. It's stale. Look at our, our clothes. We've we come from so far. Our clothes are all worn out. But they put on old clothes and they bagged up stale bread to alter the reality of what was really going on. And the Bible says, and Joshua and the Israelites forgot to pray. And as a result of them operating in the natural, the Bible said that they went into a Treaty, went into a treaty with these folk that were deceiving them. They leaned on their own strength. And they allowed these folk, these friends, these new neighbors, these new co-workers, they allowed these folk to get into their sphere of influence. They did not pray about the relationship. They did not inquire, the Bible says, amen, for God's guidance. They made a critical decision without praying first. Pray about everything. Amen. Somebody shout everything. Pray about 
everything. You heard me tell the story of the woman that came in after the pastor got through preaching about prayer. She says, well, told the pastor, well, I, I only take, uh, I don't take little things to God. I only take big things to God. And the pastor said, well, ma'am, everything's little to God. Your cancer ain't too big for God. Amen. Have I got a witness in this place? Amen. You need a job? It's not too big for God. Amen. You're lonely? It's not too big for God. Amen. Whatever you're going through, it's not too big for God. My God has an answer to everything you're facing. Amen. Growing older is not too big for God. God is able to see you through any situation. He can take you through. Have I got a witness in this place? God can handle your situation, my situation, all of our situations, all at the same time because he's omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, and he's everywhere, omnipresent. Our God is a big God, and all he asks us to do is just talk to him. Just talk to me. Just tell me all about your problems and watch me work. Watch me move. Watch me change things. Watch me sustain things. Watch me open doors that no man can open. Watch me move in a mighty way in your life, all because you what? Prayed. You prayed about it. We must make it a priority in our lives. Let's pray. Father, you know what we need. Father, you know what we're struggling with. Father, you know our situation. And so, Father, today, pastor taught us that we should pray about everything. And Lord, I'm putting this issue at your feet. I know. I thought I could handle it. I thought I could get it done. But Lord, I need your help. I need you, God, to move in a mighty way in this dilemma. Lord, with the Things are happening. Things are going well in our lives. Everything seems to be the sun is shining. And God, we're going to pray now while things are going well. Amen. We're going to pray before trouble shows up. We're going to give it to you right now. We, let's, God, we're going to do a better job of talking to you every day. We're going to do like Paul said. We're going to pray unceasingly. We're going to pray when we get in that staff meeting at work. We're going to pray when we have that encounter with a bad employee. We're going to pray when our boss is not treating us right. We're going to pray when, 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 when my wife is, is not on the same page with me. We're going to pray when my husband is not doing like he should be. God, we're going to pray when our children aren't listening to us. We're going to pray about the fact that the car is not running very well. We're going to pray about everything. So God, right now, in the name of Jesus, teach us to pray that it will be just, amen, as important as getting that cup of coffee when we start our day. That prayer somewhere, somewhere in some way that we just pause and thank you for a new day and, and thank you for what you're going to be doing throughout this day. Help us, God, to make prayer a priority. Put it on the same level of everything we do first on any day. God, thank you for keeping us and thank you that, that, you, that you wanted. I mean, God, you created the universe. I mean, you made the sun, the moon. You, 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 listen, God, you're turning the leaves brown. Look, God, you are an amazing God and yet... You want to talk and have a relationship with little old me. God, that blows my mind. It really does. That you love me so that you want to talk with me. God, somebody here today needs a relationship with you. See, you, you don't hear the prayers of the unrighteous. I know people, people have a way of calling out Jesus' name. But see, we got to have a relationship 
before prayer really works. The only prayer you hear of the unbeliever is God save me. But when we're your children, we can put everything at your feet. Amen. We can say, Daddy, 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 I need Daddy. Hallelujah. We can call on you and ask you, God, because we're in relationship with you. Now bless us and keep us, and we give you all glory. We give you all praise, and we thank you for this priority of prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We're glad that you worship with us today. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? We just got to remember to pray. Amen. About everything. And God will make everything all right. All righty. Well, we thank each of you how you're supporting the church financially. Thank you for your tithes and offerings. We don't pass the baskets anymore because we believe God has put on your heart already that you ought to bring him a tithe. Bring him an offering. And so before you leave today, make sure you leave God something. Go on, you, you can go online and, and uh, to push pay and, uh, uh, and, and, and leave, leave a donation. Bless the Lord with your tithes and your offerings. Amen. We thank you. And the other thing I want to say to you, every member of our church should be a ministry partner somewhere in some ministry. We call them ministry. We, we don't want volunteers anymore. We want ministry partners. Amen. These are people that say,